Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. My guest today is Jill Donahue, and she is a medical affairs leader and author. And she talks about the power of purpose and the importance for MSLs and medical affairs professionals. It's a really awesome conversation. Um, don't forget to follow me here on LinkedIn for announcements for MSL Talk Live. And thank you all for the support of my new book, Job Search Mastery, How to Win Your Dream Job. I had my book launch last week. You guys are awesome for all of your support. If you haven't checked it out and you're a job seeker, just go to Amazon and search my name and search Job Search Mastery. You'll find it. But really want to thank you all for your support of the book and, of course, the support of this show. Welcome to MSL Talk with Tom Caravella, a podcast specifically designed for MSLs and all things field medical. Hey, Jill, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Tom. Thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. Yeah, I am excited, guys. So Jill was introduced to me. I know you guys like to know how I come up with all this stuff. And Jill was introduced to me um, by a mutual colleague. And I found yeah. out about her story and her book. And then I talked to her and I'm like, yes, definitely. Couldn't wait to share her with you. As you guys know, every once in a while, I bring somebody um, from a little bit of a di different walk of life or just a different topic. This yeah. isn't that because Jill has a medical affairs background, but she also wrote a book about purpose. And we're going to talk about that um, and what it's all about. But first, I'm going to let her do an intro so that she could sure. tell you a little bit about herself, and then we'll get into it. Yeah, that sounds good, Tom. Yeah, I think it's important to start with you know why I'm here and, and uh, what my intentions are, right? So uh, my background, pharma from the beginning, I came in with a, a different sort of background, though. I came in with a psychology degree. And um, Noticed that everyone around me was super, super smart in the life sciences, but um, working in continuing medical education, I noticed that it wasn't enough to just have the life sciences. I mean, that was basic uh, entrance fee, right? You had to have that. But what was missing, I noticed, was the behavioral sciences, the ability to communicate and engage the person in front of you. And I imagined, like, what if both muscles were strong? Imagine the push-ups we could do. So that's what I focused my studies on. Um, trying to figure out how do we better engage? How do we better communicate? What is the magic sauce there? So I did my master's in adult education with a focus on influencing healthcare behavior change. And then when I was um, 35, something happened that really altered my path. Well, actually deepened it, I guess, because I watched at, at that time, my father died as a result of a prescribing error. Mm. So, um, and probably lots of listeners have similar stories. Medical error is such a challenge, right? Um, but but what it did for me was made me step back and say, you know, what if, what if my dad's doctors, MSL, FMD, whatever you call them, uh, rep, uh, cam, whomever, had have been better able to access and engage my father's doctor so that he would have known the right product for the right at the right time for the right patient. So I actually left Big Pharma um, two years after that because I continued to to research this and. Um, wrote my first book and and um, wanted to sort of sing from the rooftops what I was learning because I thought if only my peers in pharma knew this. So started teaching and sharing uh, what I was learning from stages and then people would invite me to come in to share with their teams and um, that sort of led to uh, developing, you know, people would say, well, What's the nut of it? I don't have time for all your books and your programs. What's the single most important thing? And that leads to what we're going to talk about today. Um, but I think I've gone beyond the introduction and now uh, <laughs> well, you talking know, about funny. my passion. <laughs> no, and and it's funny when, when you get someone who is so passionate, like I, I, I could see you're just like, you're jumping right into it, which is totally fine. I love your story. Um, so just to un, just to unpack, guys. Yeah. So Jill has a, a long history in the pharmaceutical industry um, and then went through this experience watching what happened to her dad. Um, so I know from our conversation that mm -hmm. that ignited something in you. Yeah. And it created mm -hmm. this this purpose and, and mm -hmm. it created this drive and this yeah. burn that you now have. Yeah. So can you share that piece of it? How... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that's led to some of the stuff you're doing now. 
Yeah, for sure. So interestingly, yeah, that lit a fire, right? I wanted to figure out how can we do this better? I saw this missing piece in our ability to, to communicate and engage. And how can we do that better? So I started researching that. And at first I was teaching the five steps of behavior change. You know, what do physicians think and and um, what do we need to say and do to move them forward in those steps? What do we need to do to move patients forward in those steps, to move ourselves forward, right? And I was teaching that. And then I had this moment in front of a group of sales reps, it was at the time, where I thought, oh my gosh, they could use this for manipulation <laughs> instead of positive ethical influence. And when you hear the word manipulation, what do you think of? Right? Like, yuck, right? We don't want that, right? So. Um, I stepped back and thought, what is it that I know to be true, but I'm not articulating? And I realized it was an authentic focus on the patient or being purpose driven. So I, I created this um, this um, training called The Power of Purpose. And that's the nut of it. People will say, well, what's the missing piece of the puzzle? I don't have time to read all your books. Um, what What is it? And I'll say, well, the missing piece of the puzzle is being authentically purpose driven. In our industry, that's being authentically patient focused. Mm. And so that's sort of the nut of all this research and all the times I've been teaching people. It sort of boiled down to without that, we can't do all the other stuff, right? It doesn't matter how good our science is, how good our data is. If we don't have that authentic connection to our purpose, and I can share more about what that word means, but that's sort of the nut of, of what I discovered. Um, as the most key, the foundational to everything else as the most important thing and the piece that's missing a lot. Yeah. yeah. No, lots to unpack there. And, you know, as I'm, as I'm hearing you and just thinking about the importance of what you're saying, can you, cause you had mentioned, you know, MSLs and sales reps and, and all these, these other, like, it seems like anyone and everyone should Mm. live with a sense of purpose and mm. with an obligation if you're in the pharmaceutical industry um to f figure out what you can do to move patient outcomes and and influence you know positive patient outcomes but let's talk about the msl and yeah. why this concept is so important for msls and the msl community yeah yeah yeah, I totally agree. Everyone can and should. It's a it's a choice we make, right? Um, to be focused on your purpose. And and I should clarify to Tom for for you and and the MSLs out there. When I whenever I say to people, "What's your purpose?" the first thing they think of usually is family, faith, and friends. And yes, absolutely, right. That everything you do is for the people you love, uh, that sort of thing. But think of purpose as a three legged stool. That's your personal purpose, right? Family, faith, and friends. Then there's your organizational purpose. And we are so blessed in our industry that we work for organizations whose purpose is to save and improve lives, right? Some version of that is on your website, right? The third purpose, your role purpose, that's the leg of the three-legged stool that is often missing. Mm. And of course, you know, what's in it for MSLs? Well, it's hard to sit on a two-legged stool, right? That third leg gives you the energy, the stamina, the grit, the creativity, the collaboration. It does amazing things for you when you connect with how does your role contribute to saving and improving lives? And, you know, that, that intersection where those three things meet, that's when um, the game changes for MSLs. They say, there was life before connecting with this and life after sort of like a transformational experience when they choose to do the work to be connected to how their role helps people, helps people, helps patients. And when they get that feeling, that's that um, lighting that fire inside of them. Mm. And not just that, yes, I want to help people, but when they go deeper and say, where does that come from for me? Like, you know, I'll, 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 I'd love to know for you, Tom, like, where does your drive come from? What was it about your upbringing, your experiences, your adult uh, experiences that made you want to help people so much, specifically in healthcare? Like, why do you care so much about healthcare? You know, for MSLs that I work with, you know, in the book that we'll talk about later, um, but um, which is free for everyone. So hang on and we'll give you the link for that. But, um, you know, there's a bunch of triggers. Typically, you know, I think in the book we found there were about eight triggers that can help 
MSLs come to, you know, why, why are you here? Mm. Purpose comes from helping others. So why does that matter to you that you're in a career, a profession where you get to help people, help people, help patients? Why does that matter to you? Where does that come from? And when people connect to that, they often haven't thought of it. 90% of people aren't connected to their role purpose. And when they connect to that, then that changes things. They stand taller, feel more proud. Um, you know, for MSLs, I, I, I wrote an article called uh, uh, Tired of Being Told You Went to the Dark Side, <laughs> hmm. right? Yeah. Like, yeah, helps them connect with that um, that pride and that meaning in their work again. Yeah, I did a podcast on that too, as a matter of fact. So that's so funny. Um, so let me let me go back. There was something mm-hmm. you said about um, this, you know, being a kind of a game changer. Mm-hmm. Um, so as it relates to MSLs, have you seen any results from yeah. adopting this sort of mindset? Yeah. So, you know, very tangible things like, for example, uh, an MSL said, you know, I just can't get any appointments. I'm sending the emails out and no one's responding, let alone booking appointments. And I said, well, show me the email. And the email was all about me and my company and I want an appointment with you. And I said, let's take this mindset because it really is um, being purpose-driven impacts everything you think, say, and do, right? So let's take the purpose-driven patient-centric mindset and change that email. So the email turned around completely into why am why am I reaching out to you, doctor? I'm here and here's my a little bit of my background and how I want to help you help patients and why that's important to me. Anyway, so significant changes in the response rate. So now we started booking meetings. Or MSS will tell me, you know, the connection that they have when they begin a presentation, whether it's to one or a hundred, with a three-sentence version of their, we call it an ignition, ignition story. So that's where you in three or four sentences share with someone why you're here and what your intentions are. They share that at the front of a presentation. They say the engagement completely changes. Or one-on-one with a doctor, he took his hand off the doorknob and sat back down, right? Or in an audience, uh, like a virtual audience, they'll say to me, they they actually stayed on camera. There were great questions. The outcomes afterwards were, were much larger. So you get that connection. You know, I've had um, reps say I went from, you know, uh, not even in the top 30 to top five uh, mm, reps wow. type of thing. So it's it's about, you know, people talk about we need to create relationships. We need to create connection. That's sort of the missing je ne sais quoi, right? That uh, we can teach them the science, et cetera, but they don't have that. Yeah. And this purpose helps you get that. You don't have to be an excellent a uh, talker or, you know, like, but if you can connect with your purpose while you're there, that is what will create that connection relationship. Yeah. So that's so, what's super important for MSLs. It's like this X factor. Um, yeah. And when mm-hmm. you, when you develop it, it could be very powerful. And as I'm listening to you, there's, there's a lot of research. Um, And I just wrote an article on this, but there's a lot of research on authenticity, Yeah. how powerful authenticity is. And how it really vibrates at the highest frequency if you're yeah. into that sort of thing, but um, how impactful it is it, it is for like even in social media content and influence. Um, not to mention that when you're communicating peer to peer, authenticity goes a long way, and it seems like that's a big part of this. Absolutely, um, and I'm glad you mentioned the evidence because that's the other thing I want to say is this isn't just me saying this. There is tons of evidence on this. And I always say to pharma leaders, you know, you're so big on evidence-based science, be big on evidence-based behavioral science as well. Mm. You know, I, I tell this story about um, Johnny Johnson, a bus driver who uh, was so driven by his purpose to make people smile instead of driving them around. And at the end of our bus trip at the airport, uh, you know, he drives that same circle all day long. Um, I said to him, you know, what is it, you know, that, that uh, in, inspires you? And he says, well, I had to decide, right? I came here with my master's degree. I had to decide. What's the purpose of this? Is it just a paycheck? That wasn't enough. I decided my, my purpose was to, I mean, that was important, of course, but my, beyond that, my purpose was, purpose was to bring energy and make people smile, mm. which he did. And as a result, he made more tips, 
um, went home with a smile himself. And but then his his final mic drop moment was when he said, "But you know what? It has to come from here. People are smart, you know. It has to come from here." And he put his hand on his heart. Mm. And that's what you're talking about there about that authenticity. And and I'll say to to MSLs, uh, you know. If you really don't care about what happens to the patient in the end, if you don't really care about helping that doctor or or helping your peer help a doctor, if you really don't care, you're not going to do very well. It'll come across too. I think people exactly. pick up on it. Um, yeah, and and vice versa, they pick up on the passion. They pick up on yes. someone that truly has heart. Whether you're exactly. a bus driver. Or an MSL, if you're, right. if you have a purpose and a passion, and and it comes through. There's a certain, there's so many different words I think to describe this, but there's a certain charisma that people That's carry right. with them when they live purpose driven. I guess my question to you, especially as it relates to MSLs, mm -hmm. um, is this teachable, or is this just like a signature trait that skill that people either have or they don't? Such a good question, Tom. Wouldn't it be a drag if I were to say, "Yeah, you either have or don't." <laughs> <laughs> We'd lose half the half the people. Yeah, I guess. Right. I guess. You I'm know. Out. You know. No. No. The great news is, but I think that's the problem. People think, well, we'll hire people who have that. Yeah. Right. We'll yeah. search for it, or you know, maybe you'll go hike the Camino Trail and find it or something. Right. So, so what I what I teach is is this is a choice. And like any choice, like, you know, it takes more muscle to smile than to frown, but you can choose that, right? Maybe once upon a time in your life, you thought, well, happiness would be over there, right? After you finish school, after the kids wear their diapers, after. And then you realized at some point, wait a minute, no, 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 this is a choice. I can create happiness right here, right now. Hmm. Same thing with purpose, right? You've already got your personal purpose probably pretty clear. Your organizational purpose is written out for you. Your role purpose is a choice you can make. To love your job, why not? Model that for your kids, if not for yourself, right? Model that for the people around you. That work is something I can choose to love. And it's so easy in our industry to make that choice because it is such a noble purpose, bringing science to change lives. Mm. So yeah, this is something that you can learn and it's not one and done though. Like, you know, even the, the journey, we call it a journey we take people on. It's not like a single little workshop, but we take them on this little journey and then we empower them for what are you going to do next? How are you going to fuel this? It's like a, a fire you have to keep fueling. And there's things that we've identified that help people continue to focus on purpose. And especially when you do it with a team, it's, it's harder when you're the only one, not impossible. And I always encourage people, it starts with you. But when you do it with a team, that's super powerful. And you help fuel that flame of purpose together. You literally just led right to my next question. Did I? The next question I had was that um, I'm, gl I'm glad to hear that it's teachable. I'm yeah. glad to hear that um, people listening to this, um, taking it seriously and saying, yeah, I feel like that's something I need to work on. I think that's awesome. But what about teams and what yeah. advice do you have for team leaders in developing this mindset? Mm -hmm. So important. So um, I love it when, you know, I, I often I'll start working with a leadership team and partway through the journey, they'll say, you know, I should do this with my team. And I'll say, absolutely. Because if you are a team leader and you're struggling with, how do I know how to stimulate? Like, I, like they don't have that Factor X, X factor, as you call it, right? How do I get that in them? What, what do I do to light their fire? You can't light their fire, but you can help them light the fire within, right? Take that off of yourself and help them empower themselves. And with this power of purpose, we have tried everything on in industry. We do a really good job with monetary incentives. And yes, of course, we need to have remuneration, et cetera. But the evidence out there shows that the highest performers Daniel Pink did an excellent uh, analysis in his book, Drive, of um, what are the three keys to exceptional performance. And purpose was right up there. Purpose uh, was foundational to high performers. So as a leader, you want to, you want to help your people. You want to help them ignite this. And that'll also um, reduce the silos within your team if you're having trouble with teamwork. It'll help them create collaboration inside the organization as well as outside the organization. Because 
People are influenced or engaged by those they trust, admire, and believe care for them. And when you communicate your authentic purpose, you, you are connected around, around that common purpose to, to help them help change people's lives. So yeah, as a team leader, it's, a, it's so powerful when you do it as a team together. It, yeah, when we do this journey with people in the end, there's, there's tears, there's laughter, and people say, wow, you know, Tom, I've worked with you for 20 years and I never knew, I never knew that. Yeah. So people are more willing to assume best intent, forgive, you know, roll up their sleeves, go the extra mile, all those things when they realize, okay, now I can see you finally. And I'll, I, I just know from myself that it, when you're an MS, I was, I was in the field for 10 years, um, MSLs that are out in the field, it gets lonely out there. Yeah. You, you know, so like you have to, I feel like it's so important to wake up every day intentional and purpose driven Absolutely. and feel like you're like fighting for something or, you know, or just have this, the purpose. And I feel like as MSLs, it's we talk about this on the podcast all the time. It's one of the best jobs in the world, if not the best mm -hmm. job in the world. Mm -hmm. But it can be very mundane. It could it yeah. could beat you down. It could be yeah. frustrating, like any job. But but you know, access is difficult, and KOLs could be difficult, yeah. and metrics are not getting any easier. But I feel like, and you tell me, I feel like becomes different when you attack it and come at it with a real intention and a real purpose. Exactly. And some of those problems that you mentioned uh, are reduced, the access, the difficulty, right? Um, there's a lot of rejection, but somehow you don't take it as personally when you know you're there to help patients with X, Y, Z. Mm problem, right? I'm here representing, helping that. I'm not just here to deliver data. There's a there's an end goal here, right? I have a noble purpose in this. And when you stand in that nobility, it changes how you present yourself. So you get greater access engagement. Now, there's other things we can't control. Mergers, acquisitions, restructuring, downside. There's a lot of stuff that can bring us down. But we can make a choice and create, um, you know, whatever it is for you that helps keep you there. Maybe it's listening to your podcast every day, right? Maybe it's um, reading someone's story in, in the book that we're gonna give them at the end here, reading someone else's story. Maybe it's putting a picture of the person or the patient that inspires you. Maybe it's volunteering for a, a patient organization to re really connect with that patient group that you're helping. There's all sorts of things that you can do. As simple as watch, you know, I uh, make it on my um, social media feed, watching um, patients, journeys so I can connect every day with, wow, huh, makes my problems a lot smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Looking what they were dealing with today. <clears throat> but what are you going to do to make that choice despite all the, the boring paperwork that's on your plate today or the rejection that you received all day long or the upcoming threat of an acquisition, right? What are you going to do to keep yourself focused mm -hmm. on the impact, the difference you're making in the world? That's what yeah. we all want. We all want to yeah. make a difference, right? And we have that blessing in in this role to really choose to focus on that and and fuel that flame. For sure, I I would just want to repeat one thing that Jill said. She did say how important it was to listen to the MSL Talk podcast. Just saying, I heard her say it. <laughs> you want me to repeat that? Repeat heard her that say thing. it. <laughs> no, yeah, that's so the fuel. That's the that's part of the fuel, right? There's all kinds <laughs> of places you can get fuel, but. Here's a good one. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your book. I, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm really excited for you to share your book with everyone and tell them what it's all about. Sure. So uh, it's called A Dose of Inspiration, 100 Purpose Stories from Pharma Leaders. And this came about, and I just have to show you, it's just so pretty inside. Every <laughs> one of them has a different uh, page there with their pictures and their story. Um, but it came about because you know, we were doing this journey with people and at the end of the journey, we do a group share where the team shares their stories and it's just so powerful, total goosebumps all the way through. So I'll go into my kitchen and share these stories with my family. And then I thought, well, this is silly, <laughs> right? It, ending there. And I thought, I, I there's so many people in this world that I'm not going to be able to touch or that won't, I, I won't be able to go in and, and work with their teams. But I thought, well, if we could get this book out there, it's a little dose. It mm. literally a dose of inspiration for people. And if this prompts people to think about their story or to um, be inspired to think about the patient that day, 
I would think about their purpose. Awesome. And yeah. so we've made it free, uh, a free download. And then people said, well, I want the hard copy. So we put it on Amazon. We don't get any profit from it. You know, these hundred people donated their time. I interviewed them, captured their stories for them. So it's a nonprofit endeavor. Um, but you, but Amazon makes some profit from it. But yeah. you can go there and get the hard copy. But we'll also, I, I'm sure you can put in the notes or somewhere a link yeah. to get your a free um, ebook version of it. Guys, check it out. Um, I downloaded it. I have it. Um, oh, it's really, really. And for those of you listening that couldn't see Jill, she was showing the book. So yeah. go to YouTube and check it out. But um, or just buy it. it it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it's really well done. Um, and I think you guys will get a lot out of it. So um, Jill, thank you for coming on. Any any kind of final words, any any final advice on this this topic of purpose? Yeah. I guess my final advice would be just to go to the word choice. Yeah. It's a choice. You've already done all the hard work to get into a, um, a role um, where you can use your love of science to change people's lives. Just choose to focus on that and have yeah. that mindset and that'll change everything. Powerful. That's really powerful. And guys, for those of you listening, like the last bunch of episodes have been all about books. Like I had my buddy, Anthony Leon, when he launched his book, I, as you guys know, I just launched my book, Job Search Mastery, How to Win Your Dream Job. So check it out if you haven't. We did an episode uh, called uh, Never Split the Difference, which is an amazing book, but books are so important and you should always be reading. And this is something that I think for MSLs and medical affairs professionals, you should definitely check out. It's a really good cause. It's a nonprofit and um, and it's free. So Jill, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. You're awesome, Tom. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah, you for the I good work, the, the great work you're doing, inspiring people. Awesome. Appreciate you. And uh, guys, thanks for joining us. Appreciate all your support of this show. If you got value out of this, please share it with others. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe so that you don't miss an episode in the future and feel free to leave a rating or a review or a comment. Thanks again. And we look forward to seeing you soon.